In this video, I want to discuss how lenses produce images. First, I'm going to talk about the geometry of a lens with the important points necessary um, to, uh, to, to figure out or to draw the image of an object placed in front of a lens. First, let's uh, discuss a converging lens. So here is my converging lens. I'm going to draw an imaginary line that passes straight through the middle of the lens. So that is the optic axis. And the middle of the lens, or the center of the lens rather, is indicated by this point right here. So we know that a converging lens will focus light that is incident upon the lens from, let's say, the left at a point somewhere behind the lens. And this point is called the focal point and it's labeled with F. So that's focal point. However, the lens has another focal point and that is in front of the lens. So for example, if I shown the light from right to left upon the lens, it's going to converge at that other focal point. And so therefore that is the name that I'm going to give to that focal point F here. So that is the other focal point. The distance between the other focal point and the center of the lens is the same as the distance from the focal point to the center of the lens. And this is known as the focal distance. So this distance right here, also labeled with F, is the focal distance. And so is the distance on the left side here. Focal distance. So again, how do we differentiate between the focal point and the other focal point? Well, it depends from where is the light incident. For example, right now the light is incident from left to right. So therefore, once it passes through the lens, it's going to converge upon the focal point. Therefore, the focal point in front of the lens, the direction from which the light is coming from, is just called the other focal point. If I reverse directions here, meaning the light is incident upon the lens from right to left, it's going to converge towards this focal point, which now becomes the focal point, and this would become the other focal point. For our considerations, we always think about the light coming from the left side of the lens. So on the right side of the lens, we have the focal point, And on the left side of the lens, we have the other focal point. It's easier to do it this way so that there is no confusion. Where is the focal point? Where is the other focal point? And these are just naming um, names of the two focal points. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Now let's look at the geometry of a diverging lens. So here is my diverging lens. Again, I'm going to draw the optic axis passing through the middle of the lens. So that's the optic axis. This is where the center of the lens is. And so now if I look at light that's coming or incident upon the lens from left to right. Let's draw this with an arrow like so. The light behind the lens is going to diverge away from the optic axis, like so. So it would appear as if the light is actually coming from a point in front of the lens somewhere here. So if I continue the diverged light ray like so, it's going to intersect the optic axis at this point. So that is called the principal focal point of the lens. principal focal point. 
And then, of course, the same distance from the less bu uh, lens, but the on the other side, we have another focal point, uh, which is just simply the other focal point. So a diverging lens also has two focal points. The principal focal point defined in such a way and the other focal point. The distance from each of the focal points to the center of the lens is called the focal distance. And since this is a symmetric object, both focal distances are the same. So this is the focal distance we label with F, and here we have also the focal distance labeled with F. Now let's look at exactly how we build the images of objects placed in front of a converging lens and then diverging lens. First, let's look at a converging lens. So I'm going to place an object in front of the lens on the left side of the lens beyond the focal point of the lens. And I'm going to use three specific light rays to build the image of the object. So the, uh, light ray number one is the light ray that passes straight through the center of the lens. This light ray will pass without refraction. So it's going to continue to move along the original direction of the ray. Ray number two will be incident upon the lens, parallel to the optic axis, and then after refraction, it's going to pass through the focal point behind the lens. Ray number three is going to pass through the other focal point, and then it's refracted by the lens to continue propagation parallel to the optic axis behind the lens. So combining those three light rays, will give me um, a way to find the image of the object placed in front of the lens. For a diverging lens, ray number one will be the ray that passes through the center of the lens, so it will not refract be uh, behind the lens, it will continue to move along a straight line. Ray number two is going to be incident upon the lens parallel to the optic axis, and then it's going to diverge from the optic axis behind the lens. However, its continuation in front of the lens passes through the principal focal point. Ray number three is a ray that's incident upon the lens in a direction that passes through the other focal point, but behind the lens it refracts parallel to the optic axis. So combining those three rays will allow me to find an image um, the image of an object placed in front of the lens. Okay, let's build an image of an object placed in front of a converging lens using those three light rays that I described on the previous slide. So here is my converging lens. Here is the optic axis. And so the focal point of the lens, let's say, is somewhere here. And the other focal point is symmetrically on the opposite side, right here. I'm going to place my object, let's see, right here. My object right here. And now let's find the image of that object. Let's start with ray number one. Ray number one was the ray that passes through the center of the mirror. So it does not um, refract by the, it's not refracted by the lens. And let's see if I can get it straight. Almost, something like that. So this is ray number one. Now let's do ray number two. Ray number two is the incident upon the lens parallel to the optic axis. And then it is refracted by the lens and passes through the focal point. Ray number three is the ray that passes through the other focal point. 
and then it is refracted by the lens parallel to the optic axis. And so the three rays converge at that point, and that is the location of the image of the object. So I can use those three rays for every point from the object to build the image. And so the image will be right here. So if I place the screen right where the image is, I would see that image. Okay. So that means that this image is real. It's behind the lens. It can form there because the lens is transparent for light to pass through. And so therefore this image is real right here. If I place a screen here, I would be able to see the image. So the image is real. The orientation is below the optic axis. So that means that it is inverted. And now depending on where the object is placed with respect to the lens, this image could be of different sizes. There is also a possibility for positioning the object in such a way with respect to the lens that the image is not behind the lens. Here is such example. So the object is placed between the other focal point and the lens and using the three light rays discussed, rays one, two, and three, we see that behind the lens, those rays actually uh, diverge from each other. So if I continue those rays in front of the lens like so, they will converge at a point, and that is where the image will be formed for this object. Now, if I placed a screen right here, I would be able to see the image, but since the image is on the same side of the mirror of the lens with the object, this is now a virtual image. So what we see here is that the image is virtual. It's on the same side of the lens as the object. We also see that it is upright. And in general, it will be um, larger size than the object itself. So this is a situation where we can achieve a virtual image with a converging lens. Now let's see how we can find the image of an object placed in front of a diverging lens. Here is my diverging lens. Here is the optic axis. And here is the line that passes through the center of the lens. And so the center of the lens is right here at this point. Okay, here is the principal focal point, and then behind the lens we have the other focal point. Other focal point. And I'm not going to label the principal focal point here because I will need the um, board for uh, to draw the light rays that pass here. So let's place my object somewhere here beyond the focal point, uh, beyond the principal focal point. Now let's use the three light rays that I discussed to build the image of this object. So the first light ray passes straight through the center of the lens. Almost got it. Here it is, ray number one. Ray number two is incident on the lens parallel to the optic axis. So ray number two, like this. And then behind the lens, it's going to diverge from the optic axis. So like this. But if I continue it here, it should pass, its continuation should pass through the principal focal point. So. For somebody behind the lens, it would look like the, the light ray is actually coming from the principal focal point. 
Ray number three is going to be instant upon the lens so that its direction is towards the other focal point. Let's see if I can get it right. So if I continue it behind the lens, it should pass through the other focal point. But of course, behind the lens, it will refract and it's going to be propagating parallel to the optic axis. So the light ray is instant upon the lens in a direction that would pass through the other focal point, but behind the lens, that light ray will refract parallel to the optic axis. And so this is light ray number three. So, but if I continue this light ray right here in front of the lens, then I see that the three light rays will intersect at this point. And that is where the image of this object is. Let's use orange for that. So right here. That's the image. So here for the image, we see that it is upright. But if I place a screen right here and try to display the image on the screen, I will not be able to because the screen will block the light that is um, coming from the object. So therefore, the image is virtual. And with diverging lenses, there can be no real images because no, we will never be able to form an image behind the lens. It will always be in front of the lens where the object is, so always virtual. And here's an actual um, cartoon from the textbook with nicely drawn light rays and directions building the image of an object placed in front of the lens.